Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul and with the Dicey Review. And tonight we're going to be learning how to play the two player card game Mandala from Lookout Games. Mandala comes with all of the components that you see here, including two overview cards, 110 total playing cards with six different colors of sand, and one cloth playmat. To begin setup, place the playmat in the middle of the table. Next, thoroughly shuffle all of the sand cards and then place them next to the playmat as a draw deck. On the playmat, there are two circular sections known as a mandala. Within each mandala section, there are three different zones. There's the mountain in the middle, and then your and your opponent's field sections. For each mandala, draw and place two face-up cards in each mountain section. Then give each player an action overview card, deal each player a hand of six cards, and then deal two cards into each player's section on the board known as their cup. It's important to note that you can look at the cards in your cup or in your hand at any time, but just make sure and keep them secret from your opponent. After all this has been done, randomly determine who will go first, and you're ready to play. Beginning with the start player and then alternating back and forth, each player will take one turn. And on their turn, a player has to take one of three options. Before covering the actions that a player can take on their turn in detail, we need to cover one very important rule of the game, known as the rule of color. If a player ever wants to play a card into one of the field sections or onto a mountain section of one of the two mandalas, it's important to remember that a color can only exist in one of the three zones of a mandala. So for instance, if a player wanted to play a red card into the mountain of this mandala, they wouldn't be able to because red already exists within this player's field zone. In a similar fashion, this player couldn't add a black card to their field because it already exists in their opponent's field in this mandala. A player could, however, add to an existing color in a zone, assuming they can play there. So for instance, a player could play another orange card into the mountain, adding to a color that already exists within that zone. And they could add a new color, purple in this instance, because it doesn't exist in any part of this mandala currently. Now let's look at the first action that a player could take on their turn, building a mountain and drawing. To take the build mountain and draw action, a player would choose one of the cards in their hand, and they would then add that card to one of the two mountain zones in one of the two mandalas. Let's say, for instance, that a player decided to add a card to this mountain. When adding a card to the mountain, you have to remember the rule of color. So in this example, this player has four possible options for cards that they could add to the mountain. If they wanted to, they could add this green card. That's because green doesn't exist in any zone within this mandala. They could also add the purple card for the same reason, and they could also add one of the yellow or orange cards because they can add to an existing color within a zone of a mandala. Let's say, for instance, that this player decided to add this orange card to the mountain. This player would then draw three new cards from the draw pile. Each player has a hand limit of eight, however, if a player would ever draw more than eight cards, they have to stop. So for instance, if you had six cards in hand, you could only draw two at the end of this action. After adding a card and then drawing cards, the player would check to see if they had completed the mandala, and then it would be the next player's turn. We'll cover how to complete a mandala in a moment. The next action a player could take on their turn is to grow a field. Let's say that this player decides to grow their field section on this mandala. When adding cards to a field, a player can only play cards into their field. So for instance, since this player is adding cards to a field, they could only add cards to this field section. And when adding cards to a field, players once again have to respect the rule of color. So in this mandala, the player has three potential options for colors that they could play. They wouldn't be allowed to play a green card into their field section, 
because green already exists in one of the other sections of the mandala. They could, however, add this green card to the mountain on a later turn if they wish. So in our example, this player could either play their orange, purple, or black card to their field section. And when playing a color to a field, a player can choose one or more cards of that one color from their hand to put in their field. So for instance, this player could play one of their purple cards since this color doesn't exist in any other zone of the mandala, or they could, if they wanted to, play both of their purple cards. They could have played a black card in the field or their orange card instead if they wished. Whoever has more total cards on their side of the mandala in their field section will get first pick when claiming cards from the mountain, which is something that we'll cover in a moment. It's important to note that at the end of this action, players won't draw any cards, however, and a player can never end their turn with no cards in their hand. So even if all of the cards in your hand are the same color, you have to keep at least one of them in your hand when taking this action. And it's always important to remember that a player can add more cards of a particular color to a zone if they wish. So on a future turn, this player could come back and add more purple cards to their field if they want to. After adding cards to their field of a particular color, the player would check to see if they have completed the mandala, and if they didn't, it would be their opponent's turn. And the last action that a player can take on their turn is to discard and redraw. If a player can't or doesn't want to play any cards, they can instead discard cards from their hand of a single color, and then place those cards face up in a discard pile near the draw deck. They would then draw cards from the top of the deck equal to how many they discarded. After they do this, their turn would end. As soon as all six colors have been added to one mandala, the mandala is complete and it must be destroyed. Players will take into account the cards in both fields and the mountain when checking to see if all colors are present. Beginning with the player who has the most played cards in their field, each player will alternate picking one of the colors in the mandala to collect. These spaces along the bottom of each player's play area are known as the river. Since this player has more cards in their field, they would get to select one of the colors first. So let's say they select the color orange. They would take all of the orange cards. If the color that you collected isn't currently present in your river, you would first place one of the cards of that color in the leftmost open space of your river. If there are any cards left over after you place a card in your river, you would place those face down in your cup. These will be used for in-game scoring. It would then be this player's turn to select one color from the mountain. They selected purple, so they would place that card in the first space of their river. It would then rotate back to this player to select a color, and let's say they select green. Since they don't have green in their river, they would place it in the leftmost open space of their river. And finally, this player would be left with yellow to select, and they would place it in the next space in their river, since yellow isn't currently there. It's important to note that if a player selects a card from a mountain that they already have in their river, so for instance, if this player selected this green card, that card would go directly into their cup instead of the next space on a river. You're only allowed to put one of each color in the river spaces. It's also important to note that if a mandala is completed and one player doesn't have any cards in their field, each player would take a turn picking colors as usual, but the player with no cards in their field would just discard every card. They wouldn't gain any cards in their river or their cup. After all of the cards from the mountain have been claimed, place any cards in both of the fields in the discard pile, and place two new cards in the middle of the mountain to start another mandala. The end of the game can be triggered in one of two ways. If the draw deck is ever exhausted, you would reshuffle the discard pile and then continue drawing from that pile until the next time a mandala is completed. The game would end immediately after that next mandala is destroyed. The game would also end if any player places their sixth card in the river. The game would end once all of the cards from the mountain have been claimed. Any cards left in a player's hand or in an incomplete mandala are discarded. Then players would score points for every card that they have in their cup based on the position of each color in their river. Any card in the leftmost space of the river is worth one point. This card is worth two, three, four, five, and six points. It's important to note that you don't score the cards in your river. You only score the cards that have been collected in your cup. So for instance, this player would score two points for their orange cards, two points for their green cards, six points for their purple card, 12 points for their red card, and 12 points for their two black cards, for a total of 34 points. The player with the highest score would win, and in the case of a tie, the player who has the fewest cards in their cup would win. 
All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. That was our video. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you have any other questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thediceyreview at gmail.com. You can also read our written reviews at thediceyreview.com and make sure and connect with us on social media or by visiting our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you at the table.